We're interrupting regular programming to bring you Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf's daily briefing now underway. We don't know exactly where the patient came in contact with the virus. That also means you should behave as if everyone you meet is positive. It's crucial that everyone stays at home to reduce the opportunities for spreading the virus. 21 of the cases resulted from close contact with another person who was confirmed positive who had the virus. And we're working to provide the, or we're working with private labs to secure the number of tests they have performed as outlined in our emergency health orders. We don't have the total tonight uh, because there has been a lag in private labs sharing their data, but we will in the coming days. There's also been a bottleneck at the lab where federally provided tests are being sent, which is slowing down the accumulation of results. This means, again, we will have a growing number of test results in the coming days, and we will most likely see a big increase in positive results. We've not had any additional deaths, we are thankful, so we remain at five lives lost as a result of the virus. The pre-approved testing site, which you know at Freeman Coliseum, has collected 898 tests since Sunday. Private labs have conducted even more, and Metro Health has conducted roughly 550 additional tests in our community. I also want to share with you that to, beginning tonight at 7 p.m., we will share the number of categories of positive cases by zip code on the city's website. You'll see zip codes with one to four cases, five to eight cases, and so on. This will give us an understanding of where in town we're seeing positive cases. And you'll be able to find that information at sanantonio.gov slash COVID-19. We're working to provide more data to the community in the coming days as more testing comes online. And transparency, as we understand, is crucial to helping everyone understand the situation and the role that we all play in saving lives. Remember, even those with mild to no symptoms can be carriers of the disease. That's why slowing the spread by social distancing and staying at home is absolutely vital. So let's talk about enforcement. I wanna thank all of you who are staying home, following the orders of work safe, stay home, and are only leaving the house for essentials like getting food, taking care of family and pets, and so on. Thank you to the many businesses that have closed to help prevent the spread of the virus. Our enforcement efforts remain focused on businesses. Since last week, I will share with you that we've received 557 phone calls to the San Antonio Police Department's non-emergency line. If you see a violation, you can call 210-207-SAPD. Following up on those complaint calls, police and code officers are out and they've conducted inspections and observed 417 violations. In each of those 417 cases, the business owners have agreed to comply with the order voluntarily and have either closed or if they're an exempted business, in, the, in that case, they've ensured that their business is exercising proper, proper social distancing. Because the businesses have cooperated, no citations have yet been issued. So again, thank you for the, your cooperation. I have to emphasize this is not a drill. It's not a request. It's an order. So if necessary, enforcement will continue in severity in order to gain compliance and to save lives. Judge. Yeah, well, thanks, Mayor, and thank you for talking about the need for enforcement. Uh, I had a friend ask me to call a constituent of mine. I talked to him for a good while today. It's a tragic situation, and he wanted me to tell that story and authorize me to say his name. His name is Gary Gibson. He's 63 years old. His wife wanted to go to a store leaving the car, a lot of people were in there. He said, I don't think you should go in there. She did anyway, and obviously didn't keep the social distance. She picked up the virus. She's been in the hospital now for over a week on a ventilator and in serious condition. That story, I think, brings a face to what's happening today and why we did what we did when we stayed, stay at home, work safe, and to protect everybody else doing that. Uh, people just sometimes don't realize how dangerous it is out there because we don't know how many have got it. You've already said we've got a backlog of tests that have not come back yet, so we don't know how many more have got it. Anybody could be walking around and, and causing that. So that social distance, that uh, element of staying home unless you are working in an essential job or you got to go to get your groceries or whatever, uh, it's so extremely important. As long as we can work hard and stop the spike, I think our hospital system is in good shape. 
Uh, a lot of people are not doing elective surgery today, which is freeing up some rooms. Just to give you an example, at University Hospital, I mentioned in our last time, we've taken a floor to set aside 150 rooms. Now we're taking those 150 rooms and carving out 50 that are going to be for intensive care. Uh, so we are really geared up, I think, to have it, have it in our, to handle it in our hospital system. But what's most important, we don't get that spike. And we need the citizens' uh, uh, continued effort to do what we're doing today. Just a couple of quick things on the county. We are hearing cases, uh, particularly the protective cases dealing with domestic violence. We've had a, a few of those start to come in. Uh, we're managing our jail in pretty good shape now. Test them before they get in, test them while they're there, test them when they leave. And our jail population has gone down to somewhere around 3,200 a day from a high of 4,000. So things are working, I believe, like we want them to work, but we've got to keep up the vigilance. We've got to keep people doing what they're doing today. And if everybody will continue to work with us, there's two million people around the county. That's a lot of folks, and most of them are acting very responsible, and uh, I can't thank them enough for doing that because they're helping us stop the spread of this terrible disease. Yeah, well, and I think that's extremely important. And, and Judge, we know we've seen that this virus is lethal for every age group and even people who are entirely healthy. So our goal for social distancing is to make sure that people stay at home and don't inadvertently transmit, transfer that virus that they might be carrying without symptoms to somebody else. If we do our jobs, we get out of these restrictions as quickly as possible. So we'll be back again for tomorrow's briefing with the latest information. Remember that this pandemic is dangerous. Don't take any chances. Many lives, including your own, may be at risk if you do. So stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, save lives. And at this point, we will see you again tomorrow. And we're going to take some questions from the press who have joined us today. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Uh, County Judge Stephen Cavazos is with Case 12. You mentioned that there was 37 hospitalized uh, people right now that have uh, some have shown symptoms, some have not shown symptoms. Do we know an age group of those uh, people that are currently hospitalized right I, now? So I don't have that in front of me, but let me be clear. If someone, the question was about, um, you know, if someone's hospitalized, um, the, you want to know the, the age information. We will have that up on the website updated. It'll be updated at 7 p.m. tonight, the age groups. But I, let me be clear about this. If you're hospitalized, the folks that are in the hospital have severe symptoms enough to require acute care. We have 92 people in the hospital who are either confirmed positive or who are under investigation, meaning they're awaiting a test result. Uh, and I mentioned again, a number of those folks, uh, a, a smaller portion of those folks are in, uh, on ventilators or on, in ICU. It is affecting all across the age. Remember yeah. the lady that passed away a few days ago, she was 40, I think, 40 years old, uh, 44. Yeah, 44. And uh, today, uh, uh, his wife is probably about the same age he is, 60. So I think there's a wide range of, uh, people that are getting infected. And one of them, the, the lady that was 44, we still haven't found any underlying health issues that she had. So even healthy people are subject to this. Um, yesterday, Comal County reported uh, the, the uh, death of a 44-year-old. Um, we know, I just saw a report today that an infant um, in Illinois uh, died of coronavirus. So this virus will be is lethal and indiscriminate in terms of the data that we have to, to prove how it's affecting people. And so the important thing is, even if you're mildly symptomatic, and again, the majority of people uh, have little to no symptoms, you can still be carrying the disease and transfer it to someone who might, might end up losing their battle with it. So it's critically important we slow the spread and that's the point of this whole thing. Um, Mayor, Judge, Sarah Klein from the Express News. So I understand that now you guys will be sharing zip codes as well. Why was that decision made and are you afraid that that is going to cause panic in any way? No, I think, um, look, we met today and, said, and we all came to an agreement that we need to put more uh, information out there uh, and, and err on the side of transparency. I think that people are in their homes, they're expecting more information, they're getting information from every corner of the country right now, and we want to make sure that we, we put out the latest information uh, in a way that gives them what they will need to protect themselves. And, and I think that, you know, what we will see is that all the work that we've been doing collectively to build up capacity in our medical system uh, is is actually helping us um, 
you know, stay on the front side of this uh, curve? I, I think that's really important. Uh, the worst thing for us to do is not try to get all the information out there that right. we possibly can, and then somebody make a mistake and think everything's okay. Uh, so getting the information out, making sure that we've got all the data out that we can mm -hmm. give, I think that's a good story for every citizen to listen to and then to make their judgments of how they're going to work with us. And, and I will say, uh, Sarah, one other thing. We, we've had not enough testing data to, to really um, show with great confidence the curve of infection rates here in San Antonio. We expect that to change in the coming days. And so we'll be able to, to uh, do some analytics with a lot more confidence. We can graph things, put it in onto a website where people can understand uh, sort of where we are in the trajectory of this infection. Um, but as we get more information, there's going to be more uh, for us to share. That's one of the most frustrating things I think we're going through. Uh, is we're doing a fine job, I believe, not only out at the Coliseum, but also in the hospitals and clinics that are doing it. But if we don't get the results back in a timely fashion, yeah. then it's counterproductive. What are we taking? Four days, maybe five days? Federal, labs are, federal labs are taking three to five days. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, private labs in which uh, we weren't getting data back at all, even despite our orders. Um, they are, uh, we are getting that data now. Uh, the governor put in his own uh, uh, emergency order to make sure that private labs are sharing that data positive and negative, uh, and then we have, you know, hospitals and, and clinics. Well, you know, uh, University Hospital, Bear County Hospital, they're turning it around less than 24 yeah. hours. There's just no excuse for them not to be able to keep up with it and do it right. So if we keep pressure on them, maybe we'll yeah. start getting those results back. Yeah. Mayor Judge Joey Palacios with Texas Public Radio, and you actually just started going into the next, the question I wanted to ask is what types of conversations are you having with the various hospital systems here in town? We saw university hospitals say that they're setting up a tent just in case, just in anticipation of what could happen. We see uh, major cities like New York overwhelmed by the number of cases that they're having. What types of preparations or conversations are you having with the various hospital systems that, that give you assurance and comfort that they're doing what they need to do? Well, we just met with them yesterday, uh, the CEOs of the three major hospital, four major hospital systems here in San Antonio. And the message that they gave that they're doing everything to get ready for it, the positive thing from their end is that elective surgeries are not being performed, so there's capacity there. So it's up to them to determine how they're going to use that capacity. At University Hospital, they took one floor, kept it isolated there on that one floor, and they're prepared for it. Each one of those hospital systems has a capacity. They do have ventilators. They do have ICU. But the main thing that we are doing is trying to prevent that spike. We don't want to see something happen here like it happened in New York and many other places that get overloaded. If we continue along the line that we're doing now and citizens listen to our message, uh, I don't think we'll see that spike, but they're ready for it and uh, uh, working hard to get ready for it. Yeah, and, in, and, I, and I would add in the coming days, you're gonna see more of the analytics that include the measures that we've taken as a community to social, socially distance. Or what the judge said, avoiding the spike, flattening the curve, is to make sure that we don't get that tidal wave of cases that overwhelms our medical capacity. Uh, we are working on surge management though. Uh, and in the coming days, we will we'll have uh, some pretty good examples of how we're ready in the event of an uh, infection rate that, uh, that exceeds our hospital capacity. Um, but our, our job right now is to keep people alive and to make sure that we do flatten the curve and un don't unnecessarily overwhelm our hospital community. Um, and also, uh, to add, uh, Governor Greg Abbott had issued uh, mandatory two-week quarantine for air travelers coming in from the New York tri-state area as well as the city of New Orleans this week. That order went into effect today. Now, those passengers are obviously going to have to quarantine at a residence, a hotel, or a lodge. Is, uh, what is the city or county's stance on that? Is there any fear of possible exposure or uh, increasing cases? Well, you mentioned the two uh, most dangerous places right now, New York and Louisiana. I don't think we've seen the top of Louisiana yet, and that's just right next door to us. Uh, so we do need to be extremely careful about uh, trans going across state lines and someone coming. Uh, 
it's 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 uh, hopefully well I think Louisiana did step up and getting people to stay at home and but they were a little late to the game they let Mardi Gras go, go forward you know yeah. thank goodness that we didn't do that with uh, Fiesta. Well and I, and I think that that's also lessons learned from Italy one of the things that that we know happened in Italy is that there were people traveling really indiscriminately when there was a lot of community spread happening and that's how it overwhelmed the entire the entire country. Uh, so I, I do agree that we have to be careful with domestic travel. Uh, here at the city of San Antonio, <clears throat> we have, we have um, ordered quarantine for our own employees who have had uh, you know, pleasure travel or any other travel outside of, the, outside of San Antonio to one of these hot spots. Uh, but I, can, I think you're going to see more of those come down either from the state or the federal government, um, right. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Louisiana, all all hot spots right now, and that's why people need to stay home. It's not just about San Antonio; it's also about the rest of the country where we're seeing spikes in community spread. Um, speaking of staying home, so I, Easter is right around the corner, and I know Brackenridge and camping there is a big tradition. Have there been any talks about whether not to allow that this year? Or we're not going to allow that this year. I can tell you right now, we're not going to be doing that in the parks on Easter. Unfortunately, that's going to be one of the one of the traditions that we're going to have to put a pause on um, because of the spread of this disease. Uh, I want, you know, I want to enjoy more Easter's and, and I want more, you know, I, I want that to continue, but it, it can't continue when we have uh, COVID-19 spread in our community. That's clear. And, uh, Mayor, Judge, y'all talked about hospitalizations and, and uh, some of the, the extreme care that people have to go through. Have we seen anybody recover so far? We know that some of the folks from the original Lackland cohort, they, they, they've either recovered or able yeah. to be released from TCID. Of the people that, that have tested positive since uh, the city started reporting its own cases, uh, the county started reporting its own cases, um, have we seen any, any folks of those numbers recover? Yeah. So Joey, I, so we do know, uh, obviously, the one woman who was released uh, who was positive uh, by the CDC was released prematurely. She has been uh, recovered. But one of the data points that I've requested our team, our regional medical team, to start providing is how many folks are recovering. So we don't have that data now, uh, but we're going to work to make sure that people get it. Yeah, I think there's two different groups of that. Uh, about 20 of them are in ICU and, and, uh, and ventilators, and they're the ones that are at greater risk. The others are being treated there, but they haven't reached that terrible stage of uh, having to be in ICU or having to be using a ventilator. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. All right. Great. Thanks, y'all. Thank See you again tomorrow. All right. You have been listening live to San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf giving their daily briefing on the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Just want to hit a couple highlights. They said testing continues to be a problem. There is a bottleneck. They are not getting uh, the results in as quickly as they would like. But because of that bottleneck, they expect those results to start coming in. And then they would expect an increase in positive results as those tests come in. So far, less than 900 people have been tested in Bear County tonight at seven o'clock. They expect to put some new information on the uh, city website and county website uh, where they will break down these cases by zip code into the different categories. So folks will have a better idea in their own communities where they live close to home. You know, how many people have it? How has it been spread so far? So that's more information that's coming. He also mentioned enforcement uh, and businesses. So far, there have been 557 phone calls complaining about possible violations. They've been investigated, and so far, 417 violations have been found. And uh, they've cleared most of them by talking to the owners who have agreed to either close their businesses or to do a better job of following those orders. And uh, mentioning that the hospitals are continuing to get ready for any expected wave of cases that might happen. Uh, University Hospital specifically has 150 rooms dedicated to COVID-19 patients, 50 of those set up for ICU. The jail population has been dropped down to about 3,200 from a high of 44. And uh, perhaps some of the news that we didn't want to hear towards the end, someone asked about uh, camping out in the parks for Easter. Mayor Ron Nuremberg saying definitely that will not happen this year. And he also mentioned that uh, when it comes to recoveries, a lot of you are asking us, why don't you report the number of recoveries of these cases? That's important. And we agree. The mayor says that they are asking for that data from the labs. They are working on getting it. And when they have it, they will begin sharing that information 
with us. That is pretty much what they have discussed this evening. We'll have a full breakdown for it uh, coming up tonight on the Night Beat. Continue, uh, they, just a reminder, they will continue to have these uh, daily updates at about 613 every day. We will bring them to you live on air and stream them to ksat.com. Be sure to come back for the Night Beat. We'll have the latest updates.